Ed Manangagwa's preemptive strike. This is Simon Allison in the Mail and Guardian. That's how some Zimbabweans who have spoken to the Mail and Guardian over the past two weeks have described the current crackdown. For them, it is a replay of the post-election violence 11 years ago in which thousands of opposition supporters were detained, tortured, assaulted or killed. Other Zimbabweans go even further. It hasn't been this bad since the Guku Rahundi, when about 20,000 to 36,000 people were killed. The men alleged to be responsible for those killings, like Land Minister Perens Shiri, Vice President Constantino Chiwengwa, and yes, even President Emerson Mnangagwa, are still in power. The crackdown began supposedly in response to popular protests against the imposition of a fuel tax, but the sheer scale of the operation in its third week now suggests that it was planned well in advance. It takes careful planning to conduct simultaneous military operations in towns across the country and to organize the targeted detentions and disappearances of community leaders, activists, unionists and opposition party members. The combination of terror and purge has crippled popular resistance to the government for now at least. But this is interesting. From Manangagwa's perspective, the timing of the crackdown is no accident. Zimbabwe has been staggering through a slow motion economic crisis for the past year. The government is broke, likely to be compounded by shortfalls in agricultural production which are projected to leave at least 2.4 million people in need of emergency food aid. Manangagwa's government simply does not have the foreign exchange reserves to purchase that food aid. Tobacco, expected to begin sometime between mid-February and mid-March, may also be negatively impacted. How will the government pay its civil servants who are threatening to go on strike? For any would-be autocrat, this last question is almost always the most crucial. The link between hunger and revolution is as old as civilization itself. And saying the crackdown is the Manangagwa's regime's attempt to preempt any potential revolution. As terrifying as Manangagwa's police and soldiers may be, it is clear that Manangagwa and his allies are just as terrified and that they will spare no violence in their efforts to protect themselves. 21st of January, I said the point I'm seeking to make is that there is a correlation between high inflation and revolutionary conditions, which is what Simon's saying. I said the mind game that ZANU-PF played on its citizens has evaporated in a puff of smoke. The petrol price hike was the proximate cause and ignited the already dry tinder on the ground. That was Piers Pigu. Sam Farai Monroe told The Guardian the government can switch off the internet, but not the frustrations of millions of people. This is a fact. And on the 21st of Jan, I said, what is clear to me is that Zimbabwe is at a tipping point moment.